Chapter Three: Medical Imaging Using Ionizing Radiation. Chapter Three Point One: X-ray Imaging. X-ray is very penetrating. Nevertheless, attenuation of X-rays in bones is significant enough to produce enough contrast on an X-ray image, so that different tissues appear as different shades of gray on X-ray images. Comparing with ultrasound scan, X-ray images as well as those produced by gamma radiation provide higher image resolution due to their shorter wavelengths. Wavelengths. One X-rays. A brief reveal. A properties of X-rays. The wavelength of X-rays can be as long as one cm, but as short as one nanometer. X-rays carry high energy, and they are very penetrating. It was discovered when it penetrated an envelope and exposed a photographic film. B. Production of X-rays. X-rays are produced when fast-moving electrons are absorbed. By a heavy metal target, the kinetic energy of the electrons are converted into electromagnetic radiation as the electrons are decelerated by the high atomic number metal target. Two, X-ray interaction with different media. A attenuation of X-rays. The decrease in wave intensity. As the wave energy is scattered or absorbed by the medium particles, is called attenuation. Due to attenuation, different tissues appear differently in a X-ray film. For X-ray, which is an electromagnetic wave, the transmitted intensity is given by the following expression, which forms an exponentially decaying curve, just like radioactive. Decay. The linear attenuation coefficient indicates the degree of attenuation of the medium. In general, the linear attenuation coefficient increases with the density of the medium, and so the transmitted intensity decreases more. In particular, the linear attenuation coefficient of bone is about. Five times that of the soft tissues. Refer to page one one three for the quick reference. The overall attenuation depends on the nature of the medium, as well as the depth that the wave has transmitted, and the transmitted intensity falls exponentially, as shown in figure three point one e. When the attenuation is smaller, then there will be larger transmitted intensity. Then this area will appear darker in the X-ray film. Example one: Attenuation of X-rays. This question is a straightforward application of the formula about transmitted intensity. You must master the skills in handling. Exponential functions and logarithms, in order to find the correct answer. B. Half value thickness. Half value thickness is the thickness that halves the intensity of X-rays. The concept is quite similar to the half life in radioactivity, which is the time taken to half the radioactivity. In general, a medium with higher density produces larger attenuation, and hence a larger linear attenuation coefficient, and so a shorter half-life thickness. In fact, the half-life thickness is inversely proportional to the linear attenuation coefficient. Compare the decay of radioactivity and the attenuation of X-rays. We can see that the linear attenuation coefficient and the half value thickness correspond to decay constant and half life respectively. When the decay constant is larger, the decay is faster, 
and the radioactivity drops more quickly, and so the half life is shorter. Similarly, when a linear attenuation coefficient is larger, the intensity drops faster, and the transmitter intensity drops more quickly, and so the half value thickness is shorter. Example two. For part A, it is a simple question. It asks you how much of the original X-ray intensity may remain when an X-ray passes through twice the half value thickness of a medium. A similar question arises when we consider the thickness of an apron for the workers in the industry. To protect workers who work with radioactivity such as X-rays and gamma rays. The apron should have certain thickness of lead, which is determined by the half value thickness of the radiation. For part B of the question, I would suggest an alternative method, which may be easier to handle, especially during the time of examination. Example three. Finding half value thickness from an attenuation distance graph. Part A asks you to find the half value thickness. It is easy as you can directly read it from the graph. Unlike the case when you find half life for radioactivity, there is now no issue of background reading, and so reading half value thickness is just a piece of cake. Then in part B. You can calculate the linear attenuation coefficient easily from the half value thickness above. Do checkpoint one below.